women to make it a little easier. We know that the women want the men to try harder. We know that you think they're crazy. <laughs> we know that you think they're jerks. But we're going to try and get beyond that and sort of collectively try and figure out why most of the people in the room here are single, including me. So, uh, without further ado, I would like to introduce the moderator for this evening. She is a partner in catch matchmaking and two Asian matchmakers, is that correct? And she's um, little, but she's feisty, so she will come find you. Please welcome Katie Chen. scared to start off with. You guys moved up more. That's great. So, um, as Brian said, uh, I am with Two Asian Matchmakers and we deal with a lot of Asian to Asian matches and a lot of Asian to non-Asian. So, um, you guys who are non-Asian here, you're safe. So, you're, you came to the right place, you're okay. Um, but anyhow, growing up in a really traditional, strict family, trying to fit into the American way, um, I had no idea my culture was relationship minded. I had no idea that uh, they wanted me to date. I had no idea that they were interested in people having kids. But, you know, I really knew that, uh, yeah, my culture was really interested in food, like every few hours. Uh, I knew they were really interested in basically good grades. And I knew they were interested in a good career, good finances. But all of a sudden, it's like, why are you single? Um, and then when you're not single, and I'm in a relationship, they're like, why are you married? Okay, and then it's like, where are the grandkids? So, um, anyhow, those are kind of a small snapshot of probably um, a lot of the uh, LA Asian singles, so a very small snapshot, but we're here to kind of find out a little bit more about your um, questions and, and what affects you uh, dating here. So anyways, I have uh, a bunch of great experts to introduce that will probably help answer the question, well, why is everyone still single? So all that stuff that your aunties, your uncles, your second cousins, and your parents are asking you, well, maybe these guys have some insight. So let's introduce them. Uh, so he is the founder of Dinner for Eight, an Asian American professionals networking group. It started in April 2008, currently enjoys over 2,700 members. That's a lot of single people. Uh, why not a traditional, while not a traditional dating group, Dinner for Eight has sparked a number of marriages, uh, including the founder himself. So please welcome to the stage, Alex Chan. First center. She's the co-founder of Catch Matchmaking, a matchmaking company which caters to the career guy next door. So if you're not a millionaire, you're okay here. Uh, she specializes in serving men who are in their late 20s to 50s. As a self-professed romantic, she loves bringing people together and making the introductions that lead to long-term relationships. So welcome to the stage, May Huey. So this part's the easy part, the clapping, it will get your wake up. So he's a networking expert and organizer of creative Asian singles and business networking events throughout LA County. He hosted the first ever Asian speed dating event in Koreatown. That's brave. Over 10 years ago, uh, an event which resulted in four marriages, he's been the point man for dozens of charity and cultural events throughout the Asian community. Please welcome Brian Kim. and pickup artist, as well as a dating advice columnist for LA Weekly. He's also the founder, CEO, and lead counselor, or columnist, not a counselor, I won't make up a name for you. For, uh, so he's the founder, CEO, and lead instructor of ABCs of Attraction, a company that offers pickup artist courses to men. So you guys will learn a lot here. He's been featured in dozens of media outlets nationwide. So please welcome, the Asian Playboy, J.T. Tran. <laughs> Last but not least, he's a, an award-winning director, producer, author, and the creator of How to Find Love in 60 Seconds. Uh, he's also the creator of the groundbreaking number one off-Broadway sensation, Pieces, 
which has enjoyed sold out runs around the world and features some of Hollywood's most dynamic and beautiful women. Describes a lot of you here. And he's been the subject of features on Fox, ABC, CNN, Entertainment Weekly, The New Yorker, and Esquire magazine. He's a busy guy. The creator and executive producer of The Great Love Debate, our very own, please welcome Brian Howie. Okay, so now that you know so much about the experts here, um, let's find out more about what's going on with you guys. So just help me out with some show of hands here. How many um, people grew up here in LA or have lived here over 10 years? Okay. Wow. That's a good number. Good number. So how many on the west side? Okay. East siders? People just totally south of South Bay. So, how many people have been married? Don't be shy. Okay. How many have been divorced? <laughs> Same. <laughs> I like that. So, they're true. Okay. Uh, how many people in their 20s? You guys can lie, some of your ages. Okay. How many in your 30s? Okay. 40s. And everyone else is 10 past 40. So, we're under. Um, how many believe that you know, your problem of being single is just getting quality first dates? This is darn quality. It's not out there. Also, everyone else thinks they're all quality, they just don't have chemistry or something. Okay. And then how many think that um, the problem is turning the first date into a relationship? Just doesn't go too far. Okay. And then, so online daters, Tinder. All those folks, app dating. How many are on Tinder on. right now? <laughs> right now. Okay. So, how many people are actually meeting people organically still? Like, you just bump into people and you're not shy, you just talk. And you actually don't give the guys a cold shoulder. Oh, a quite a few ladies, okay. How about meeting people through your nosy, you know, parents? You know, still meeting that way? Nosy neighbors, things like that. Okay, so um, how many of you guys feel that your parents or your family members are like, you have to date Asian, you have to marry Asian? The pressure's on. And how many of you don't want to marry or date Asian? Don't want. Don't want. Don't want. Everybody wants to. All right, so anyhow, that, you know. You're going to have burning questions, hopefully like that throughout the night and um, I'm going to be there to pull you out and answer a lot of them. So therefore, I'm going to get closer to you, I'm going to get closer um, and ask you those questions. So um, I'm going to start off um, asking a burning question of mine. So how, uh, for you guys, for the men, what is the most frustrating part about dating Asian women? <laughs> <laughs> They're the same room with you, but we're, we're, we have safety. We, we have I like safety. that the non-Asian guy sticks his hand out. <laughs> okay. Um, What's the most frustrating part about being an Asian woman? Uh, I'm Sean. Uh, the most frustrating part is some are very non-expressive in their emotions. Uh, trying to get any feeling or emotion is like going Hmm. Anyone else feel like that out there, men? Any other frustration? We'll give them a chance. Okay. My name is Ray, and the Asian women that I've dated that I've found have been frustrating for me is that uh, when it comes to um, like having other female friends, we tend to be very um, just uh, possessive, I guess, or is it the word, or just. Uh, they start to get, I don't know, like, I guess this... Territorial. Yeah, there you go. Yeah. Yeah. It's an Asian thing. <laughs> and that's frustrating for me. It's like, oh, okay. Yeah. Oh, okay. Sean has a phone to pick with some people. Not at all. Not at all. They're sweet. It's challenging to meet them organically because most other women will roll two, three, maybe 
mistaken for. Uh, Asian women, when you, you know, you're out and about, are rolling in packs of 10. Is <laughs> <laughs> that true? You want to find them when they're alone, huh? <laughs> Very challenging. What do the ladies think? What is the most... What do you guys think of all that? Anybody speak up? True. Okay, so what is the most frustrating part about being an Asian man, then? That's frustrating. Can we talk about it? That's frustrating. Silence is them. They're not expressing their feelings. Come on. So, okay. That's, any other brain questions out there? Comments? The guys are vocal. I'm, I'm John. I'll make this very short uh, about the subject of frustration. I think this problem is the language here. And the problem is, I'm never going to be able to speak Chinese or Japanese. So, I'm just very excited to this issue. Rosetta Stone, my friend. <laughs> <laughs> There's an app for that. <laughs> <laughs> so, what do the experts think? Like, how should these guys get the women to be more respected? Is there a way? What would, the, what would, what would you guys think? And, and maybe even, what would the women want? Well, I think it's the responsibility of the guys that express themselves first, right? Because we get that accusation as Asian men, I call it the broker face, where we don't express our emotions to the woman. So how is she going to, like, express herself if we close ourselves off? I think it's their responsibility as men to take that first step forward. You guys think that, true women? I agree. Thank you. I agree. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> Anyone follow up on that? You agree? What do you think you do? What do you want to do? I don't really want them to do anything, but <laughs> in my experience with Asian men, because I dated a lot of people, um, Asian guys tend to be, they lose like crap. That's how I describe it. Hi. And they're like, oh, you know, we should hang out. I was like, I was like, oh, we should just hang out. I was like, are you asking that date? I think so. Like, well, why don't you just ask me on a date? A lot of times, like, they generally, like, want to, like, friend zone themselves, and then they move in, and they become your boyfriend down They're like ninja dates. If they don't ask you out, they can't be rejected. It's a fear of rejection. So, like, when you're talking about women are expressive, well, first of all, you can't express anything because you don't know what you want. You don't even know what you're trying to do. Are you trying to friend zone yourself? Because I think everybody wants to be my best friend. I thought like a lot of the guys were gay too, so I don't know. <laughs> I got a question for it. Would you actually prefer that they be straight up with their intention in the beginning? To say well, whether it's friends or as a bad girl? Well, maybe not to Like, first time I always hang out and later you straight up with intention. Is it honorable? Is being honorable about being dishonorable? Is respectable? Yeah. Hey, lots of... <laughs> she, I think she's saying. <laughs> I think she's saying like, don't try to use like the nice guy and get into her pants, oh. right? Be, be a cool guy, get to know her, and then position as her to be like, I'm going to be really nice to her, and maybe if I am super nice, then she's going to be attractive. Right? And then, like, there are guys that have gone on a date where we're, like, kind of in the, like, the gray zone, and later, like, we're just looking at them, like, you know, we go out and we kind of, like, playing mind games, or, oh, you guys, have to change the date because I'm really busy. It's like, you change the date, like, three times in a row, like, you actually want to go out with me. And then they ask me to go out again, and then they pick me all the time, and then they like drop off. I'm like, you're just playing mind games at this point. Yeah, a lot of that I think is just like defense mechanism because a lot of guys, not every guy, but a lot of guys are insecure about how to present but themselves. It's like check yes or no if you like me. Do you think that you're easily approachable? As soon as you talk about it, are you approachable? Oh, okay. the, the lack of expression? What was it? Well, I mean, I spoke to a couple of people standing outside, and whoever came and talked to me, I talked to all of them. So I can't tell if I'm approachable, I'm not staring at myself. But I might have a really mean how many, face. How many women here find themselves to be approachable? Hmm. How many men well, think that these women are approachable? Exactly. <laughs> Uh, let me do something. Katie, you got the mic for a second? Yeah. Alright, approachable women. I'm going to show you, so I'm going to demonstrate something. Let's see how approachable you are. 
I got to get all my workout in here. You got to get your workout in. Let's go. Let's go. Give me a woman who, when you do a little demonstration, approachable. How many women here said that they were approachable? I saw a lot of hands go up. All right. Let's go, approachable woman. Come on up. Come on, approachable woman. And give me a... Uh, Give me a guy who thinks that the women are not approachable. Give me a volunteer. She's really good looking, so give me a volunteer. No, I'm just going to pick somebody. That's not bad. Uh, right here, let's go. See, there we go. Hold on. You're so approachable. Senator, what's your name? Laura. Laura, all right. Nice to meet you. Now we have a very confident man here. Come on up. Okay. Mike. Mike and Laura. Oh, this is good. so good. <laughs> All right, you're approachable. Uh, do you go to Starbucks? Sure. Give me your... Hold on. She's not that approachable. <laughs> Give me your fourth in line at Starbucks post. Post? Yeah, your fourth in line at Starbucks. What does that look like? What are you doing? I'm smiling. Are you? <laughs> I'm not on my phone. You're not on how many women are on their phone at Starbucks? Like this. Yeah, you all are. You're not a yeah. Okay, but is that your body language? No. No, that's not your body language? Give me your no, you're smiling at Starbucks. She's approachable. Oh. Alright, you come into Starbucks. You go to Starbucks? Okay. Would you approach her? No. What? You, you wouldn't approach her? It's not like that in Starbucks. <laughs> JT, is it like that Starbucks? It can be. Right. I, 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 I don't know how to approach her in Starbucks. <laughs> the Asian Playboy is going to show you how to approach her in Starbucks. Well, if I'm in line, I'm going to be standing here and if I see her, see a pretty girl behind me, I'm going to be like, oh, mind if I flirt with you now? And you just talk. Mind right? if I flirt? That's what I look That's the first one. Yeah. Well, the thing is, this goes back to what she was saying. As a guy, you need to show her intent. I'm there, I'm there to flirt, okay? If I find her attractive. I had a student, he was like a five foot nothing Korean guy. He ended up getting married to a girl that he approached, a tall African American girl in the middle of Starbucks, right? And it is about putting yourself out there. I think it's, it's a lot more endearing and attractive when a man commits himself as opposed to more kind of like pussy putting around. That, that's a very good point. Now you said you wouldn't approach her at Starbucks because it's Starbucks? Not on the phone. But you said you were the person. It's just surreal to think Starbucks is going on the phone. It's such a crazy scenario, you can't even fathom it. Alright, well, she's a pretty girl and she's in Whole Foods. And uh, let's see what she got. Whole Foods is his game. Go ahead. Dressed. That's not a <laughs> Go ahead. What's your Go ahead. I'm going to be making dinner for some friends this weekend, and uh, maybe you can help me select some <laughs> Yeah? Are we okay with that? I, I, I was raised on a chicken farm. I know a lot about chicken. No. Yeah. <laughs> what should I look for? Well, it depends. I mean, are you, do you like lean meat or a little. Oh. Meat oh. Meat? oh. <laughs> Some <laughs> <laughs> good job, you guys. Thank you. Asking him what kind of meat he likes is a good thing. There you go. Thank you, guys. Give him a hand. Hello, welcome. Thank you. Welcome. Okay, so you guys talk about Asian, um, Asian men. So what about Asian men who you mentioned who don't speak uh, Asian men? So JT mentioned uh, the Korean guy who him on an African American girl and they're married. So how is that different? How is that different when it's Asian guy sitting on non Asian women? Well, I think culturally, a lot, not every Asian guy is like this, but I definitely run into this, where there's a subset of Asian guys that believe that non-Asian women don't find us attractive because of the Hollywood stereotypes and as asexualized and emasculated men. So a lot of times they shoot themselves in the foot and they're like, oh, okay, you know, the white girls don't like Asian guys, so I'm never going to try to talk to her. 
while the white girl who has never dated an Asian guy is like, oh, okay, he only dates other Asian girls, so I'm not going to try to flirt with him. And it becomes this sort of vortex of misunderstanding, kind of a self-fulfilling prophecy. And again, I think it's up to us guys to take that first step, to break that pattern, right? to make that step regardless of any kind of stereotypes that we might see in Hollywood. So how many guys here want to date non-Asian women? Mm. Yeah, like 70%. Yeah. It's a lot. It's a lot. It's a lot. It's a lot. And so what else do we have for, for JP? Guys, you saw that, that exchange there. Maybe he has some more morsels to give you. So what else do you want to ask him? Oh, oh there you go. My name is Juan. Uh, JP, I uh, keep up a lot of your work, and uh, you specialize with uh, helping men, uh, you know, date outside of you know the Asian culture. Uh, but I never really had a problem with that. But my problem is uh, always been dating, meeting, meeting Asian women. Uh, I probably dated like two Asian women in my life, um, and uh, from my experience, a lot of uh, well, I grew up, I grew up in Oakland. In the hood, I'm from Oakland, and I went to an all black college in Houston. So I didn't grow up with a lot I guess of Asian women. All black. <laughs> 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 I mean, the point zero one percent. But um, you know, I uh, I didn't grow up around a lot. Of, you know, I didn't have a lot of Asian friends growing up. And uh, when I go out, you know, to clubs and bars, or social gatherings, I see Asian women. They're always like hanging out by themselves, and it's, there's like a, there's like a force field, and it's really hard to break into. I mean, women, am I right? Asian women? Come on. <laughs> yeah, so, uh, like, how, I wouldn't say how can I, how can I break that, but how can I, just avoid that force with the <laughs> You want the secret formula to Asian girls. I mean, I guess, I guess I have to, I, I think I'm going to answer one question to expand my Asian social circle. Okay. Sure, sure. Um, I mean, that idea of that force field, I think part of that is also maybe you projecting a little bit of, of your own belief. But there is certain, certainly amount of, a certain amount of clickishness that goes on. I will say that when it comes to, let's say, a group of all Asian girls, and they're typically going to be with Asian guys too, that the idea is to indirectly befriend the group, maybe befriend the guy first, and get introduced to her. Um, I know it's a little bit different if you're in like maybe an Asian club where things get more social, where there's a little bit more kind of mingling. But if it's like a bunch of Asian, maybe like a more mainstream club, it will probably be more circuitous, where you befriend the friend and then get introduced into the circle, and then you can talk to them. Thank you. You have to go to the bathroom, right? You can do it. Soccer. <laughs> <laughs> So, okay, sounds like the guys are saying women should make it easier. So, do you women think you're making it harder? Why, why are we doing that? Is it because parents said, don't date, don't date, you know, just focus on other things, let the men do the chasing? Is it still that voice that's telling us what to do? Or why do you guys think it appears like you're making it harder for these guys? What do you think? Hi. So, um, just basically being raised up with the Asian culture, I think we're just very, like, kind of, like, reserved in that perspective. So, what really helps for us is, like, we like masculine men. Just be bold and just say, you know what? You know, just be a gentleman. Be masculine, but take charge. Don't be a jerk. Be a gentleman. Just, like, you know, I really comment something like what we're wearing, how beautiful we look. And, like, you know, I really, I'd love to, like, get to know you better. Take you out. How, how do you feel about that? That's straight up. Either you're gonna get a yes or a no. That's it. Yeah, that's that's on the men, but it's also a little bit on the women. The um, how many women here want a confident man? Everybody, right? About ten percent of men are sort of naturally confident to the level that you want to be. Okay. There's a much there's a much larger pool of men that can be confident if you create an environment where that confidence is low. That is about making smiles and getting off your phone and letting them know that you can be approached. 
I don't believe it's a woman should ask out a man. I don't believe you should have to approach them ever. I don't believe that. It's about creating an environment where the man can feel comfortable and not fear rejection. He's probably going to be rejected, but that's, you know, that's after you've already communicated. You can't have him not operating out of fear of rejection without even trying. And that's on you to create that environment. So what's the worst that can happen? You get rejected. It's a no. Then you try again. But if you don't try, you're always gonna. It's always gonna be a no. I mean, I dated a guy one time, and he was so bold and so um, confident in the sense that he tells me if I approach somebody and I ask them and they say no, so that's what I get at the end of the day, a no. Is that so bad? If you don't try and you don't go up and take that chance then you're just always going to wonder, right? Um, I don't know why we're so afraid of being sexist. I mean, the whole point is you're trying to go out there and meet somebody, so you've got to do it. I will in, interject here because I do have a lot of clients that suffer from anxiety and reject so I'm very intimately familiar with why it occurs. And I completely agree with what you said, that the man should take that action and take that initiative. But for perspective for the women who don't quite understand, um, I'll give you an example. I once had an armed forces uh, student that came back from Afghanistan, and he was like telling me the story about how he was in this MRAP and an RPG came flowing through the window, blowing up the, the radio in the back, and he had to jump out and like charge like the uh, you know the terrorists. And I'm like, wait a minute, and you're scared to talk to girls? And you're like, I'd rather be shot at than get rejected by girls. And that's because the rejection, the emotions, we create a fantasy that is endless. We create fantasy after fantasy after fantasy, and there is no kind of it's a never ending. Right, until the men go out there and expose themselves and realize that rejection is not as bad. But otherwise, the guys, they just create this fantasy of like how much painful rejection is. Right? So, I think that's, for the, for the women, don't quite understand why it's so painful for guys. Well, the first time I ever got rejected um, was the first time, essentially, I'd ever been to a bar pub. I was like 24, and I'd never been out to talk to girls. And I was told, hey, go ask these girls if who lies more, men and women, just a conversation starter. And I did that, my voice cracked, and I felt my testicles kind of try to stick up into my body. I was completely terrified. And like, one by one, all the girls said something, and I'm like, okay, and I ran away. <laughs> And you just learn, it, it's called um, exposure therapy or flooding, where you are um, exposed to certain stimuli to the point where you no longer fear it, right? So it's, it's based off of therapy. Um, okay. well, I want to go off of Jason's point as an Asian American. I think a lot of us have been raised in an Asian have a lot of conservative um, just ideas about being Asian. You shouldn't put yourself out there. So as an Asian man, I don't think we really say it until maybe late high school, into college, because of the focus on studying. That's what our parents say. Well, why do you want to go out to girls? You should be studying. And then you go study, and then you come out, and you're like, where's your girlfriend? Well, I can study. That's my cousin. Like my cousin, straight to USC, got a PhD. His mom was a no girl. Study. Did that. First year out of, you know, he's a doctor. Then his mom was like, all right, when are we getting married? He's like, what? He was so afraid of women because he just didn't know how. So I think as an Asian man, you just have to go out there. And for me, I went through that as well in high school. It's like, oh, I'm afraid of doctors. It's just repetition of your thing. You're not going to get a home run from swing. So all these guys are sitting. All these, I see all these Asian men at my event. They're in the dugout with a bat, and they're just holding the bat. Like, not really, but. No, sometimes. <laughs> So, you know, in that sense, put your wood out there and swing it. <laughs> <laughs> and I think for me, I've grown up in LA, I've seen a lot of women of every homosexual business. And 
Chicago, Professor Tierney did another study where, as an Asian guy, I need to make two hundred forty-seven thousand dollars more than I can pay you. That's a Roy's Royce, all right. In order to get the same response as any other white guy. So when it comes to online dating, I really tell guys to avoid it. I mean, there's a solution to it, but it's very difficult because it's very easy for women to be sort of unconsciously racist about their preferences. I think for African American women too. Yes. Like I said, we're the, we're the second bottom. <laughs> <laughs> well, I feel the list part is, um, it is our Asian upbringing, because everything we do, our parents are always like, oh, you got a five series, that's not a five four year. <laughs> that's not the one five. You make 70, oh, you couldn't make 100, but you couldn't. So we unconsciously have this list of things, and I think for women, obviously you guys have a biological clock, even though with the whole feminism movement, you guys, I want a career, but then that clock hits, and I've seen it with a lot of members of my group, during the mid-30s, early 30s, you know, rising up their uh, company, making powerful positions, making good money, and all of a sudden, I'm like, wow, these girls are really hard charging, and then they come to me, I need to find a husband. You get thirsty. <laughs> right, and then so your list is here, and then by the time the clock hits, 
you're going to take the next few that kind of meet halfway. And, and I don't think that's good for women in general because you have this huge list and then, oh, you're not bald and you're not fat and you're sitting here. I've seen some of that happen. And with Asian men as well, we also have our list. It's like, oh, she's black too, does she wear heels? You know, does she look good in this and that? And it's hard for a lot of guys, and I see that at the clubs too, it's like Asian men pull us up in so much that the only way we can talk is when we're drunk. <laughs> and I see that so much, and it's just, you don't need to be that drunk. You could be buzzed. You actually don't even need to be buzzed. It's just, you can't handle your drama. Right, not only do you get the right taste, but I've seen so much of that drunkenness where you could have had a chance with that girl, but then you Right. I just hear one comment too about the uh, talked about before. We held a, a Christian event in downtown Los Angeles, and we just kind of made it to the point where, in order to make an improvement in your life, you have to identify what challenge is first. And what's considered with that challenge is that Asian options to identify living people possible solutions. So one thing that I noticed that we had an event in downtown Los Angeles earlier this year, and it was a Christian event. So we invited to make it a few other people. And there's probably about a good ratio of about 40 to 40 men and women. And we noticed that there was a, was a network install mixer. And at the restaurant, it was coincidentally, a lot of the guys were all kind of mixing in there, while the women are all kind of hanging out together. And the whole idea was we just want to keep them mixing in there. And what we found was that those women that we got to know, they're very successful in their career. They're very highly educated, very happy. But when it comes to relationships, they're really taking a passive role. They kind of, they're go in a career and a professional idea, whether they're shopping or anything else, they're very aggressive. They're very good about getting what they want. But when it comes to a relationship, they actually hold off and they want the guy to kind of pursue it. Isn't that why so, guys want Asian women? That's part of why. So what was curious was that at the, at the event, a lot of them were sticking together because they kind of wanted the guys to approach them. So we decided to mix things up and we did a mixer. We did a, a short a sheet. We had various questions and the woman had to go around and ask many different questions. And whoever completed that sheet the most, they got a prize at the end. So those same women that were very shy, now they change their mindset to that the mode where they're basically thinking, okay, now I've got to get all these questions answered. So their mindset completely changed. And those women that were very shy, just automatically they changed and they're going around talking to all the guys now, just like a man. So their mentality was very, very different and that opened up a lot more possibilities. Yeah, that gets back to the approach to anything that I talked about earlier. We do these events all over the country and um, we have an after party. Where's the after party, Kate? Walton Crane, just down the street, right. 334. Right. 322. Right. 322. Right. 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 But anyway, it's right on the corner. And what happens is the men will approach and talk to every woman in the room. The women will stand in groups of three and say, There's no cute guys here. And the, and the men get that sort of reputation as being superficial and being all about looks or whatever, but really, the guys really want to engage the women, and the women tend to. Look for excuses, look for reasons, look for so they won't get hurt, they won't get hurt. So there's fear matching fear, and it really is a problem that we have to, you know, you have to sort of force yourself to open up your, don't stand your degree, open up and let somebody come to you, and vice versa. It just makes a huge difference. So we have a question here. I think really quickly before, just to interject, I know that there's a, as guys, we get scared when there are a group of women, and I used to be that way. But I think one way to reframe that is, that's an opportunity for you to befriend her friends and impress her. By being a good friend and showing that you're able to navigate through her social circle, you become simply more socially competent and more attractive in your eyes, because you're making an effort to be very much, not just sitting on her. So I think one way to reframe it is, don't be afraid of a group of scary girls, but like, those are just new friends I haven't met. Right. You should talk to the women's friends, because that's kind of how the Asians work, right? So, and then you still have to make your intentions clear to reference to that girl, to be able to make your friends. So a lot of stuff to be through. Um, back to what else, what burning questions do we have for our experts? To wake up the audience a little. Okay, good. So this question is more for the gentleman's audience. 
I noticed that when you asked the question if um, all these things when we are approachable, only two people raised their hands. So I was just curious, what would you like us to do so that you feel that we're approachable? And should I stare you? Should I be screaming at you? <laughs> you know, I'm very, very curious to see what you look for. My says, be aware of how you look. Meaning when you're not talking to somebody, or you're, out, you're at the bank, or you're walking around, or a lot of women have a very scary, um, what's your, your at rest bitch face, everybody's not asked. And you're not aware of it. Um, you know, a, a lot of, I have a lot of Irish friends, and they have advanced with a bitch Irish faces. And a lot of women do not have that, so it's sort of this mask of, get away from me, when you're not doing it. I was standing there my own business, but it's a little bit about awareness of how you look to the opposite sex at all times. Hmm, she's a cute girl. She's her hair, her makeup. I mean, she's a tie, a tie that's approachable. That's approachable right there, but what else do you guys need to see? Oh, I love it when guys ask me random questions. I think that makes them approachable to talk to me. Any kind of questions. Uh, let me give you an example. So maybe. I talked to a girl uh, with an open-ended question. How's your weekend? Great. It's good. That's <laughs> not an open-ended question. Well, what did you, you do this weekend? Well, I went to this weekend, I went to some place, I shoot shopping. So uh, if you're approachable, elaborate. elaborate. Try, to, try to make a conversation out of it. And also maybe just instead of asking the question very briefly, yes, no, ask the person a question back as well. That actually has been to encourage a guy to basically carry on the conversation. Well, I don't, I don't think girls get dressed up and they say to themselves that they're putting on the makeup, I want to go through a job interview today, mm -hmm. right? I mean, you have a conversation instead of asking questions. Because when you ask a lot of questions, it makes the other person uncomfortable. Like one or two is fine, but after a certain point, you are literally sort of like a homeless person coming up to them and asking for money. Because you, you're, you're asking and you're asking and you're not giving any sort of emotional content back. You don't want to have any situation where they're guessing, like, is there a right or wrong answer here? They don't want that either. It really is about communication and really about you know, engaging them versus putting them on the spot and really just like they speak up. Yeah, one comment on what Matt has you know, made in terms of what you can do. I think just from personal experience, if I saw someone that was that looked very stoic across her, even though she looked very attractive, I might be inclined to want to approach her, but if she gives a very serious look in the body language, is really listening that she's not approachable, she's closing herself off, like Brian, you were saying, that kind of gives me the idea that she's communicating something that she's not she's not receptive, she's not open, or she's busy on her phone. So maybe one thing is to just make eye contact and smile. That way you're not rejecting, that way you're kind of opening it up, making it a little bit easier for the guys to make their approach if they want. Simple as eye contact and smile. Is that what you guys need? Is that what Some kind of signal. Just don't need to say anything or ask questions just to make it easier for the guys. Uh, one thing, my name is John. One thing I can learn about approachability for women is many women will have a purse and hold it like this and end up in this position like this, looking at their phone. This basically tells a man, I don't want to talk to you, I'm good. Now you could be busy, or you could just be standing there waiting in line. The other one is that when you see a man and he makes eye contact, generally men are kind of afraid of that. They will look away. If you would like them, just keep looking at them. So not like staring at them, but just, you know, hmm, maybe he's interested. And open up. Drop your arms down a little bit. Because one of the challenges is when you're standing there and you're like this, and a lot of girls will stand in line like this. Guys will go, oh, they don't want to talk. Okay. So all that's like in person. What about online? What if you're online dating? How do you know if that person's approachable? How do you know how many times to text that person or message that person before you give up? Or how many times do you guys want the text to be going on? So how do you display approachability when you're not in person? You're just online. What do you guys need to see? What do the men need to see? Okay, behind you. Happy faces, a lot of buttons. Good teamwork on the mic, boys. Okay, well, ladies, we know you guys have a very busy life. You have a large social circle, lots of activity. But if you're interested in a guy, please make some time. I'll give an example of a girl. Uh, she's obviously very interested, but every time I ask her out, 
most of the time, it's like, oh, I have dinner with my friends this, or I have this with my friends that. And I think she's not interested. But then, three days later, I get a text. Hi, Sean, how are you? How was your weekend? What's going on? And this happens repeatedly, where she initiates contact, trying to figure out why I've gone away. So, make yourself available. What's really going on on the other end, ladies, when you do that? It's like, what is it? She's not really into you. I mean, you're kind of like... But it's pretty, and the guys do the same things. Um, it's basically keeping you in a hole. You're, you're the backup plan, or you're just on the side. Um, they probably have something going on, and when they get bored, they're like, let me call up this guy. Everybody wants to feel needed, everybody wants reaffirmation. So you're, you're just there for that purpose. And like I said, the guys do the same thing. So with that, you just move on. If people are really interested in you, they'll ask you out. I mean, if they're interested, they'll say something. They'll bring up something. But if they're just putting you on through this pattern, move on. Yeah, one of the ways too, not only also, That was very helpful. Also so. in person, I think it's really important just to be straight up and honest with what your attention is and make it a priority if they're actually important to your type. Make it important, make time for that person as well. Don't play any mind games, it just wastes time for the most part. Um, not directly related to online dating, but it's related to the times. So, uh, my name is Isabel. So I have a question for all of the gentlemen here in the audience. Like, how much time and energy you are willing to put in your relationship? Because uh, for me, I've actually I've dated many. It's not like one-time dating. It's not dating, dating. It's one-time me, many guys. But um, the problem for me is that most of the guys I see, um, maybe it's my. Um, I just don't know the reason, but like they're pretty successful, they go to good school and they have a good job. But then I realized that they actually relationship is not that significant to them. They are busy with a career and I feel like they're so satisfied with uh, with the achievements they have in the career. And then for me, um, for, uh, for, for women, if you're being told like you're busy or something, for women, uh, interpret it as a rejection. And for me, I think love is actually the symbol of being, being with each other, being together. So I think a lot of successful men don't have that quality or don't have the, the, that capability to love someone. Thank you. So successful men, because there's so many in here, I know. So what is it? What? How much time do we invest in a relationship? Should we see her once a week? Should we see her a couple times a week? Well, I think when, when guys are looking for a serious relationship, I think when it comes to girls and guys, women tend to look for Mr. Right, while guys settle down when it's the right time. When he is in that time of place where it is time to find someone serious, he'll make that happen by hook or by crook. He'll find somebody. It is about timing for guys. Like, if his career is there and his life is there, and he's like, okay, now I've got to check off, I've got to have a wife to, you know, get my mom off my back or whatnot, that'll happen. And I think what you're finding is just poor timing. You're looking for the right qualities in a guy. He, you know, when it's the right time for him, it's whoever's there with him, and that's who he'll be with. He's totally right. One comment to your question or your concern, when you, if, even if you had that experience in the past, where you found that the guy was successful, he hasn't really given you the time, that actually keep an open mind with the next person you meet, because every prior experience that you have doesn't necessarily mean that every person in the future is going to be the same way. So you can kind of keep that to your own, and really give him the benefit of the doubt, and maybe address it to him, talk openly about it, and see at what stage is he at, and see not only what he says, but what he does, goes by his actions. Because if there's consistency there, go by his actions, and that over time can tell you where he stands. Is that pretty accurate? You guys all agree? Nobody needs to say. Go ahead, behind you, Kay. Go ahead. Oh! Let me say, like, here we are. You just say that. When, when shall I ask him how many how many more months have we gone now? And when shall I ask him? You say, like, you know what? We should talk to him and see how long you need. And because I got out with a guy, like, you know what? We got out, like, in the beginning. We, we see each other quite often. And suddenly he just. We saw each other like twice a month, and I don't know what's going on. That 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 kind of situation, I, I I don't know. I think you should probably just address it. You don't need to be very serious about it and say when do we get married. But maybe if you're too embarrassed about saying talking about yourself, 
what you can do maybe is to talk about a different scenario, say my friend. And your friend would be your friend and that guy that she's dating might be in a similar situation that you are in with him. And then kind of see, kind of gauge what his reaction is. That way you're not really putting yourself out there, but you kind of see what he's thinking and where he's at. I think trying to define a relationship is always a recipe for disaster. I try to say, are you my girlfriend? Are you like super serious? I mean, you can, especially if they're coming from a more traditional background, but trying, trying to put boundaries and putting words to it, I don't think is very helpful. I think that if it's going to end up serious, that kind of gravitational and attractional pull will turn into, the, into that. Or if it's going to just be friends will benefit, it will just naturally go that way because both of you are, are subconsciously thinking that. It's when you both are thinking of different things when you're getting pulled apart. And that's what it sounds like to you. He's right. And a lot of, particularly women, want to define what it is they're doing so they have an answer for their friends and family. What are you guys? Instead of a unique relationship, whatever it is between two people with each other, as long as you two are on the same page, just for that. Yeah, from my experience, I think anytime I hear a question like that from a woman, like, when are we going to get married? I, in the back of my mind, is like, how can I get out of this room? Like, like da, da, da. Yeah, because I'm thinking along the lines, like, if she's asking me how long is it going to get married, there will be other questions coming along the line. So once we get married, she'll be, when are we going to have kids? When are we going to move into the house? When are you going to get me this? And I think the same equivalent of that question for men ask women, if you're going out with a guy, if the guy says, when are we going to have sex? You'll just probably be like, that's all he wants. So if you look at it that way, I would never bring up those type of questions. You should be let in. A guy knows when we want to get married. We just know. Like my fiance is right there. She she didn't ask me anything. She knew when we were serious. But then I knew I've gone through my life, I've been through my experiences, but I knew when I wanted to get married. She didn't have to ask me like, is it gonna be the year? I actually surprised her, she didn't have no idea. So the best way you just have to do it is, if you have to ask, that guy is probably not for you. That's just my experience, because he is going to look for some. He's going to call his friend and go, dude, that girl, she asked me when we get married, and all his friends, be like, you got to go, dude. <laughs> <laughs> you got to go. For, for the side, there's another part. Oh, sorry, for the yeah. side of women is, let, judge him by his actions. Like, if he's acting like serious and going on, vacations together or meeting his parents, let that define, you know, help you define it as opposed to trying to put words to it. If he's not introducing you to his parents and inviting you over for Christmas and Thanksgiving, let him, his actions, all right, you know, be the judge. You know, I just wanted to thank you for saying that because I think it's important that in the relationships that I've been in, you know, I've like you said, it's like I, I know what I want. It's like I know I want to date. I, I know I want to be. I want I want to date seriously. And so I tell the woman that you know, hey, I like you. I'm attracted to you, and I want to date you. And so I know I I'm very straight up in front, and I tell them, you know, hey, I want to date you. I like you. I'm attracted to you. And if they it's not a reciprocation. If they live, then I know exactly where I am in my relationship, and there's no gray area. There's no you know, fuzzy, and so, he said, just, you know, I think it's just, I think it's the, the guy's responsibility to communicate clearly and effectively to the woman what they want in that relationship. That's just me. It's a good man right there. So, um, you guys brought up good, I mean, as far as points on uh, when to define the relationship, you know, marriage, uh, sex, things like that. I mean, is that different from your experience dating Asian men, dating Asian women? Like, is, is the timeline different if you've dated outside of Asian? Um, is it slower? Is it faster? When's, when do you become exclusive? When do you have sex? When it comes to things like that, is it different dating Asian? What do you guys find out there? Is it different when you date Asian? Is it a different timeline? Uh, so, yeah, my name is Hong. Ladies. <laughs> <laughs> All right, you can stand up. Uh, um, so, as far as the uh, uh, timeline of between dating and dating and non-Asian, my uh, experience. Um, Asian women 
know, they hold off and let him meet your parents. They want to know if I'm like the one, if I'm, if I'm like serious about the relationship. Whereas not even such a kid with it, they're like, they're really like a casual not type of thing. I mean, they'll just bring you over to your parents' house like it's, like it's nothing. You know, that's, 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 that's my experience. So, uh, yeah. Thank you. Anything else you guys experience out there that's different? You guys scared of your parents, you want to make sure they, they pass the test and there's not like a million and one questions? Messing with your head? I have a question for the Asian women. Um, do you tend to have higher standards for who you want to date because you're comparing your boyfriend or date to your girlfriends? Or do you want to bring home someone you're proud of to your parents? Is that a factor? Like even though you're really attracted to this guy, are you going to not date him because you think your friends won't approve or your parents won't approve? Or that's not even a factor? I, I see a disagreeing. Uh, it, I, I don't think it's a factor for me. I think it's, uh, it's all um, depends on if I like this person. So I don't know if other ladies here agree. So I don't consider family or, and uh, friends' uh, opinion. And I don't compare my date with my girlfriend's date. However, I would do compare my date with my previous date. <laughs> well, That's what Brian told me not to do, right? <laughs> right. Actually, well, it is understandable. I just want to make one quick comment that it is understandable to be did say your previous boyfriend was cheated on you. Then because that was very impactful, maybe the next person you look for, that trust becomes that much more important, so that becomes more of a higher priority for the next time. Yeah, that's not the positive stuff, but I'm just saying that you might want to just really just to keep in mind that and not label the next person, really just to keep it clean slate. That way you give it a fair chance. Hi, my name is Bohua, and I think it depends your age and the, uh, what stage of your life you're in. I, I truly believe when I was younger, it did matter a lot more what family and my friends said about my age. Whereas once you get older, you just let that go and form your own opinion. Well, that's, that's a good point. We asked earlier how many Asian women prefer gay Asian men and vice versa. How many of your families prefer you to date Asian? Yeah. Most? Everybody? Half? No? How many families prefer if they date Asian? And we're using this broad term Asian, I know it's different. How many Korean descent in here? How many Korean? How many Japanese? How many Chinese? More Chinese than anybody, right? Wow. Is that right? That's not China as a big country. <laughs> <laughs> so come on, any more burning questions from the women's side? Oh yes. You're wearing my earbuds, kind of many. Um, so we, we discussed approachability, and we discussed, we sort of break down that we've been focused so much on education career, and now it's time to date. So the question goes to the men. How many of you consider yourself good daters, and you know how to date? What do you do on a first date? Do you know how to, what to do on a first date? So this goes first to the experts. What are the do's and don'ts? Very basic, dating 101 on a first date to get that girls want to go to another date with you. And then for the men, when you go out on a first date, you consider yourself like, I, I've got this, I know what I'm doing. I'm just curious, because sometimes for me, it goes beyond that. Okay, so we can. Let's start that first date. And that's where it kind of does not go to the yeah. I call it giving good date. <laughs> it's a, it, dating is a completely different skill set. It, it really is. And I know I've seen this so many times with my clients where they think, okay, I'll get a girlfriend and then I'll learn how to date. But you gotta learn how to date first and then get a girlfriend. Um, I mean, you know, originally for me, I was very lucky in the fact that, you know, my first girlfriend approached me and then she kind of took charge. But later on as I grew up, but I would be the one that, that suggest it because if you call her, she's expecting you to suggest the plan. And you want to be flexible, right? You don't want to be like, hey, let's go eat sushi and she's like a fish, right? Um, another thing is you shouldn't ever, I guess, 
be possessive or needy or act like a, a boyfriend, even though this is just the first date. I would hear this sometimes from girls. He'll, he'll be like blowing up her phone and acting very needy about, you know, about her, right? You should avoid that. And if you're ESL, I think what, 75% of Asian Americans are basically ESL, English is a second language, avoid a dinner date because the only thing you can do is talk. If you're not a great conversationalist, do something else. Do something physical, whether it's rock climbing or mini golfing or bowling, where you can communicate with your body and your nonverbal communication, as opposed to sitting there and you're Chinese and she's Japanese and you have the inability of not being able to communicate. I think. Isn't that especially important for your head? That's what you're going to You can go rock climbing forever, but you're never going to If you can't communicate, you can't communicate. Sure, but you see this all the time where white guys will date Asian girls and they don't speak a lick of Chinese. Well, that's a different thing. Right. But still, the concept still applies. They like it that way. Yeah. <laughs> but attraction is attraction, and these two people are attracted, and you are having verbal communication barriers, I would encourage you to do something as opposed to just sitting around and having dinner. And the only thing you can talk about is just is talk. What other people don't? Sure. Anymore? I, I mean, I think your, your goal, both the men and the women, on your first date, your only goal, if you like this person, is to get to the second date. And that means don't do anything to screw up the possibility, don't blow anything up. No pressure. Okay, okay, okay. Don't TMI. Just do the thing. Just get it to the point where you, you know, show a little bit of who you are, you understand a little bit, and don't scare anybody off. And then the second date, take another step forward. I think that's the only goal of the first date is to get to the second date. Well, first dates are really, really awkward. It's nerve-wracking. I mean, I hated first dates. I, it's no fun. But I always tell the women, if the first dates were, if you felt neutral about the date or positive, then you should give them a chance and go out on a second date. So unless they did something offensive or you're, you're not compatible religion-wise, you're not compatible, you know, you're a night nice person, he's, you know, a daytime person and you just really don't have anything in common, then yes, it's okay, you don't have to go on a second date. But if the date was neutral and you're uh, on the fence, then go out with him again. You don't need to ask all of your girlfriends, your single girlfriends, if you should go out with him again. Makes in totally fact, right. you should not get dating advice from your single girlfriends. You should get <laughs> dating advice from married people or people who are in relationships because they're the ones that are going to give you the best advice and um, she's, she's totally right. People are nervous on dates, particularly if they like you. I mean, if they like you, they might even be more or nervous. So, unless, just like May said, unless it's something disastrous or a deal breaker, give everybody a second chance. Give everybody a second date. And on that note as well, if you're um, if you're nervous, it's okay. I would rather go out with a guy who's a little nervous, a little shy, a little awkward than a Rico Suave who's no offense, JP. <laughs> <laughs> he's really smooth. He's really smooth. I know he's going to wine and dine me and he's going to sleep with me. I'd rather go out with a guy I know is educated, smart, he's a little awkward. That's great. He's a diamond in the rough. Who cares if he dresses a little different than what you would like? Guess what? When you're his girlfriend, you can clothe him. You can take him to the mall and change him, buy the clothes that you want to buy him. Just ask my boyfriend. He wears what I tell him to wear. Hey, <laughs> I think one just comment in general. Oh, right. Brian. All right. Just one comment in general. I think with dating in general, not to think of it as any, any kind of after anything too big to be afraid of. Just think about it as more of a skip to the You always have a good time, enjoy the whole journey experience. So even though you're getting to a point where you're working with a girlfriend, having a husband and wife, that might be the milestone, really try to enjoy the journey along the way. So really enjoy that person's company, have good conversation, keep it natural to yourself. Uh, and you just try to get to know that person. How many women here make a, make a list, have a, have a, like a checklist of things they're looking for to them? How many women have a list? One, two, uh, uh, hand over reluctantly, <laughs> yes, <laughs> Honestly, how many women have a list? There's got to be more. Like a mental list. There's a list on my office of one. Right. What, and, and, there's got to be more. And, and do you, what do you recommend they do with those lists? Katie or May, when they come to your office? Pick three. Is it height? Is it income? I think you got to throw everything out. I, I, I think I think there, I think there's unless it's you know your core values you shouldn't sacrifice. But I've said this before. I believe that that every woman really only needs three things from her man or needs her provided. 
with three things. Yeah. And that is you need a man who makes you feel special, you need a man who makes you feel sexy, and most importantly, you need a man who makes you feel safe. And that is the same thing on the first date, and the same thing 30 years into the marriage. And sexy and special are pretty easy. Safe is the hard one. Safe is about trust and vulnerability and sharing and honesty and all these other things that a man 6'4 has nothing to do with it. It's not a height thing. It's not a money thing. It's really about, I'm in this with you, and we're going to do this together. And I think that's what you mean. You don't need a guy who likes to go hiking. I always make this joke, like, if anybody really wanted to go hiking, they would build bars on top of the mountain. Nobody really wanted to hike. You don't need a guy who, you don't need a tall guy. You don't need a guy who does this for a living. You don't need a guy, you know, we have all these things. You really need men who, who really provide you with those feelings. And men really need women who make them feel admired, who make them feel respected, and make them feel appreciated. And those are things that are really lacking for women and men. The three S's, the takeaway from Barney Good. Actually, good. I think there's there's another thing too. The uh, woman look for the four C's in a guy, and then look for the four H's. Oh. <laughs> Actually, so the three Pasha, who guess what the four C's would be? And this is just there's no correct answer, just in terms what of the structure. So in terms of the qualities that woman would look for in a man. So we all know it's all chemistry, right? Yeah. Connect, chemistry connection. If anything, you adapt that in place. It's hard to move on. Confidence. confidence, yes. Yeah. The chemistry, confidence, cash. That's that's probably one of the things as well. We'll say confidence in the second one. They say third one is going to be what actually draws you to that person as well. Initially, Bill Clinton. Think Bill Clinton. What does he have? Charisma. That draws you to that person, even though you're not into that person initially. Just through persistence and being very generous, you tend to gravitate. That works for women. What women may not have interest in men. If he's persistent, says the right things, does the correct things, she slowly can switch. Yeah, but those those, are, kind of those are character descriptions. That's, right. that's not what you're getting from him. Those are things about him. That's a little bit different. And again, confidence. If you're looking for him as confident, you can create a confident man if you create an environment. Like, uh, like I said earlier, some men are confident. Every man can be confident with the right woman. Every man is capable of being confident. Who's a man here who's not confident? Give me a man who thinks he's not confident. Who's a man who's generally shy and, and is not comfortable approaching women? Anybody here? Okay. You're not confident. Okay, we're gonna have you do something right now. You're gonna you're gonna stand up in front of this room. You're gonna pick any lady you want, anyone that you find is attractive, and you're gonna walk over and introduce yourself. Pick any the most attractive woman in the room. <laughs> Right. That's a very confident. Yeah. Wow. See, was that hard? He, he said he's not confident in a real person, so he was able to do that. It should be, it should be very easy for him to do it. He's not in front of a real person. That was excellent. Good job. Woo. Okay, what other burning questions do we have? Just a quick side note for both the guys and the girls who make a mental checklist of what he or she should have. I think it was um, the book, The Science of Happily Ever After. Like once you get past three items that he or she has to have, you reach like infinity. Like you are less likely to ever find that mate when you have like a checklist above three. So keep that in mind. So we talked about approachability. We talked about basically do's and don'ts first date. We talked about um, sex. Marriage, don't ask, you ask. So what else is on your mind in terms of why we're all single? I'm sorry, I asked questions again, but it's a very important question. So um, during the uh, stage of dating, how much you should show the true self to the person? So some people would say that it's just like selling a car, you need to make the car like very new and like clean. But like the, the coming the inside is not that great. Everybody knows that. But um, if you pretend to be the bad woman, then like later on you can pre you cannot pretend the whole life. So I just want to know what's the balance to you know show the true self but still like uh, make this process smooth. I think show your true self right away. The yeah. thing you need to be is consistent. Meaning this is. You know, a lot of women show one side of them 
and then they feel comfortable in the relationship, and they feel like they can show the real side, and that's why the men think you're crazy. Okay? 30 days in, she's like, she's crazy! And she's on the first date. <laughs> be consistent, be encouraging, and be yourself on these dates. Like, you know, I use this example all the time. Say a man here, you go on a first date with him, and he says he likes to play poker on Friday night. And you don't really want to say anything about that, and you're like, every Friday night is poker, but you let it go. And then you're dating, and a month into it, you start complaining that you don't get to see him on Friday nights, and he says, I told you that on the first date. You're crazy, why did you change? If on the first date, when he said that he likes to play poker Friday night, and you said something along the lines of, I bet you there's other things we can do that are a lot more fun on Friday nights, and he doesn't care about poker anymore. And you said it right away in encouraging, sporting, playful fashion, he will go for anything. And that's really what it's about. Be your best, playful, fun, encouraging self to him. And again, that gets back to giving you confidence. To be crazy off the bat. Yeah, be cra be crazy. crazy. I love crazy. So, show sure, bring me the crazy. Yeah. Yeah, just be yourself in the beginning. That way you don't have to try to fake it. And if he doesn't accept you the way you are, then you know he's not the right one. What else we got here? What else is burning a hole in our feet. Do women ever say that, let's take it slow and just be friends, thinking that later on you might like him? Like, I'm just curious, because a lot of the women say, oh, I just want to be friends for now, but I am maybe interested in him later. Like, they don't want to admit that they're interested, and is that the case with any of the ladies out there? That you want to be friends first because you want to take it slow because you're not you don't have a lot of dating experience and you're hoping later on when you're being friends first and then you get to know him and then become a boyfriend? Yes, I, I would. I think would. Is that your approach to dating? Like that's, yes, I you're, you're comfortable with that? And Okay, I was just curious because a lot of women come and say, I just want to make friends. And it's like, well, you're coming to a dating service. They're like, no, no, I want to make friends first and then become boyfriend, girlfriend. So I didn't know if that was a thing. <laughs> Guys, do you ever encounter that where women are like, let's just be friends and then... On that. There we go. <laughs> <laughs> but how do you let the guy know that, yes, I want to be friends first, hoping he'll lead to something, versus I just want to be friends forever? What are the signs? I think that's an easy way to like, it's a, you're getting them enough. Yeah. Like, so when you say, I want to be friends, maybe, okay. Yeah. So women, if you truly aren't interested in a romantic relationship, you shouldn't say, I just want to be friends first. That's the kiss of death. I think most guys interpret it as run nowadays, so. And, and don't be afraid of being her friends because you don't know who her friends are. You know? <laughs> you might, you, she might have friends, so stick around. Okay, so we're, we're winding down. It's uh, kind of a play night for some of you, so we can pick this up later at the, the next stop. Um, but we have time for one more question from each side. So guys, ladies, we have time for one more question. Okay. Good teamwork, guys. Hi, my name's Tony. Um, this is maybe a complaint, but I don't know. Um, we don't like texting. <laughs> when it comes to talking, especially for the first time, we prefer talking on the phone. Yeah, I, that's, I don't know and that. that's a generational thing. That's an age. You can't thing. turn the hand. Sorry. So, yeah, go ahead. I mean, you can't do great technology, but a lot of women think a phone call is is actually too intimate, especially a lot of women under 30, yeah. you're going to have to deal with that and eventually get to a point where you're communicating on the same page. But we can't rule you know, anything out. A lot of women are like, it was so weird to call me. Yeah. You know, you just kind of have to, to either date older or learn yeah. to deal with that. I've heard girls say exactly that. It's like, yeah. he was really cute, I was really into him, and then he called, oh my god, <laughs> such a freak. Right. You can't turn back the hands of time. You cannot turn back the hands of time. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. <laughs> And then not texting back for five minutes. You're waiting for a response. <laughs> five then minutes. Do something else for five, five minutes. minutes. Five minutes. Five minutes. <laughs> five minutes. <laughs> and if, you, if she texts me, she calls. You know, she texts me. She doesn't call. She doesn't. If she texts me, then 
make sure you have the time to dedicate, you know, for that half an hour you want to text. Yeah, don't, yeah. Be don't be that, busy. Text messaging is yeah, yeah. instant messaging. That's yeah. all it is. A phone number to a girl is just like instant messaging. Yeah, that's all it is. You're going to have to date older. Yeah. <laughs> I have a question. Wait 10 minutes for uh, At least she's responding. Yeah, I was just probably. Just I would just ignore the, the, the time in between how yeah. long it takes because yeah. people have busy lives. Yeah. Yeah. And if, if you're so concerned about time, that means that you need to fill up your life to, to do something as opposed to waiting by the phone. Yeah. Yeah. Put, put your phone in your pocket. <laughs> no, I want to go take Take a shower. Yeah, whatever you're doing in the shower, it probably takes five minutes. I think, like, the 21st century man, we're supposed to say, like, no, we're not uncomfortable. But realistically speaking, and they've done studies on this, guys will be uncomfortable. Like, I know, like, logically speaking, you shouldn't be. But the truth is, you know, in their hearts of hearts, they are going to be uncomfortable with it. I think that's the truth. You shouldn't be, right? You should be partners, but I think that's what happens. That, will, that is what will happen. Unless the guy is out of ball. So with that, we have some uh, takeaways from each expert, right? So why don't we get some um, takeaway? And we are going to bring the party to the next spot. So take it away, each of you guys, with um, your closing remarks. Start with that.
Just get out there. There's no wrong answer. Someone says no, you're not going to die. Just go out there and keep going until you find a yes. I think as Asians, we always want to be perfectionists. Like, everything I do has to be perfect. i got to get in Harvard. i got this job, that. So we're afraid of rejection. But there really is. I, I've been rejected more times than I, I got yeses. But that's just part of the game. In baseball, I grew up in baseball. 300 hits, three out of 10 hits. That's amazing. If you keep that attitude, you don't need 10 out of 10. One out of 10, that's all you need. You only want to live with one person the rest of your life. So just go for that one, go through 10, you'll be fine. Um, I think that the men who came out and the women who came out, I think you guys are all amazing. You were wanting to learn more about the opposite sex. I think it's great that there's a lot of Asian men and Asian women. I think it's great. And for the holidays, I guess one piece of advice I could give to me is that anyone who asks you out to a party, just say yes. Don't say, oh, who else is going to be there? Just say yes. If a guy asks you out and if he's not totally not who you're looking for, then just give him a chance. You just never know. So, I mean, I didn't think I'd be dating a guy a few years younger than me who's a smoker. I always said I will not date a smoker. Guess what? He's a little bit younger and he's a smoker. He doesn't make six figures, but that's okay. I make my own money. I don't need him to make six figures. But does he make me feel safe? Does he make me feel secure? Does he make me feel sexy and, you know, all those things? Yes. So hopefully you guys will just say yes. Yeah. I just want to go to one piece of advice from Ned and one is from a men's standpoint, I think that guys typically, or I don't want to generalize, but I would say you're looking for the person that is going to be the A or she's going to be the unicorn that doesn't exist out there, that try to find ways of improving yourself. Learn about yourself, develop yourself personally, professionally, so you feel the after, offer a lot more to the woman when you do meet her and to be able to understand women's roles. So don't only look at it from a male's perspective, look at it from a female's perspective so you can connect, connect them to that upper level. And on the female side, one thing I might suggest is just to consider is, I told my younger cousin that she's 21 years old, I said, when you're in school, you don't want to be in a position where you want to be chosen by a guy. You want to take initiative, make it neutral, and really be in a position where you take initiative and actually be in a position where you can take and choose. Even if it's the most important decision you'll make in your life, you want to give yourself that kind of chance. But not doing that too much over the top. Just keep that neutral, smile, keep it cordial, and give yourself a good opportunity. So, predominantly, my advice is generally for men. So, you know, here's why guys pay me $3,000 for class. The secret of getting a girl of your dreams. There is one thing only one thing in this universe that we have 100% control over, and that's what I do. That's it. You know, we talked about making girls more approachable to us, and them send us signals that make it easier, but I can't control her. There's no general mind trick for that. I can only control what I do. And if I see a beautiful girl, and this is like the future mother of my child, or a potential girlfriend, it is my responsibility as a man, as a gentleman, to go there and introduce myself. Because I can't control her. I don't want to control her. But I can only control me and my actions. So my word of advice is to take action. To, con to take action to control what you want and go for. Uh, first of all, sort of taking back on May said, it's terrific to hear about the national health and to good. Secondly, you gave you guys a lot of words that we want you to take with you, but there's three words that you need to leave behind. Those words are not my type. It's a little bit dirty, it's just that we have no type. It's like the word that I'm And what I mean by that is whether you're going to say white or Asian or free or Chinese or anything. Be open to everybody. Go out. Give everybody an opportunity. At least engage them. One day won't kill you. Two days won't kill you. Say hi to somebody. When we go to the, where are we going? Crane and Crow, what's it called? Wolf and Crane. Wolf and Crane. Crane and Crow. Wolf and Crow around the corner. Talk to every man here. Try and talk to as many women as you can. And every woman here, let them talk to you. Also, talk to everybody up here. They all have a really good say everything you want to say. There's a lot of experts up here, and they got a lot of advice for you. Thank you very much for coming, everybody. That was great.
<laughs> and congratulations on your nuptials. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, uh, but for a quick background, you took the Seattle boot camp like a couple years ago, right? Yeah, quite a few years ago. Um, I, I took it and then I kind of went inactive because I was busy with school and all that. Um, I was in the choir and everything, so just really busy. And then um, a year, like a year or two later, a friend of mine was like really heartbroken, Garrett. 